Welcome back, everybody. So we're so happy you're, you're still with us to talk more about the gameplay and the animation of the Varangian Guard. And who better to, to discuss all of that with us than these three amazing people on the couch with me today. We have, again, you know her, the queen of all animation, Vanessa, is back with us. Our lord and savior, JC. <laughs> awesome talk about gameplay. And the designer of the Varangian Guard, Alex, is on the couch with us, too. Hello and welcome to you all. How are you doing today? You. Excited? Oh yeah. my god, it's such a Super great excited. day. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe Steph announced all of these things. I know, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Really, Steph, <laughs> save some for the rest of us. No. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Yeah, what what an exciting day. And like I love it. It's amazing. Uh so but, but let's dive into it because I'm sure people really want to start to see, you know, what the Varangian Guard can do, what it's all about. So let's start uh with JC. Like if you could describe this hero in three words, like what would you say? Fewer. That's that's not enough words. But you're already <laughs> over three. I'm sorry. So no. when we're building this hero, right, where there's there's three very very specific aspects that we we're looking for. Uh, the first one is we want to create a more support hero. Uh, it's something we haven't really had in For Honor uh, to have a hero that's really built around supporting your allies in a more defensive matter because our second keyword is defensive, right? So we want to have a support defensive hero that really you feel like you want to get close to your allies and help them in battle, not necessarily with ganking, but more with helping them succeed. And we'll see how that pans out with a move that is a little bit different, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, and finally, we were, we were really focusing a lot as well on the tactical aspect of this hero, as well as like where to position yourself, how to position yourself, when do you use specific moves, having a lot of skill-based play there with when to, how to time your attacks, how to time your abilities to make sure everything's great and really have a good tactical control of battlefields. I'm super excited. Really, really awesome. We have like something pretty cool to show off. Nice, I'm nice. excited. Exciting. Exciting. Yep. Yeah. Yep, uh, yeah, I can't wait to can't wait to look into that too. Uh, but you know, we also want to know. Uh, we also know that you know, apart from the game design too, so much of the the work too is is a big animation component. So it looks good. So, uh, Vanessa, can you tell us what it was like to work on on like this new Varangian Guard as well? I mean, going back to Viking, finally. Yes. That was so great to uh, to dive back into their. Uh, you know, it's the first Viking with the armor. That she has. That's right. So it's like the challenge that we had in the animation team to represent the wildness of the Viking, the rawness. But she's not just that. Mm -hmm. Like her background and the fact that she went away and, and the training that she got. Uh, and she's also the daughter of a warlord. So, you know, maybe you show her mm. one or two trick, you know. So yeah. um, all of that was really, really important for uh, for me and for the animation team to create something that will be represented. So all the run, run, rawness of the Viking, but also the discipline and the defensive too. So because yeah. she has a big shield and she wants to use yeah. it. So. Right. And and speaking of which, because I know Raph, <laughs> Raph demonstrated Raph a bit, but before me. but I I wanted to pull him on this side because <laughs> I really wanted to play yes. with him too. But uh, yeah, like. Like this, the, these are the props. Yes, those right? were For the actual yeah. props from the mocap. Yep. Uh, yeah. They're pretty heavy, right? They're 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 <laughs> yes. sizable. They're yeah. pretty uh, heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. heavy. So they are to scale as well uh, from yeah. uh, in game. So it's really funny, but because it's really heavy and because the mocap actor needs to swing left and right for right. eight hours, do the nav and all of that. Uh, Sometimes we use the Berserker Axe oh, just right there, which is also the Shaman Axe too. It's pretty <laughs> cool because you look at a, at a scale comparison, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel it's, a little... It's yes. real different. <laughs> oh, no, I was like, we can <laughs> say these are the same <laughs> like, weapon, right? <laughs> I'm like, I feel a little small compared to this. And, and, and sometimes it's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's of course important to have the right weight for the actor to be able to yeah. represent the animation. Yeah. And she's very heavy. Like, the player will notice when they play them play her like she's you can feel the heaviness and for me it was really important to represent that but i need to give them a break once in a while and not break their <laughs> arms so <laughs> this one was pretty useful too so yeah our mocap actors are really 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 yeah good, they're trained they, for this yeah, but you know but they're it's still humans, uh, right? yeah. exactly and i mean the length of the 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 pole as well like sometimes you do a swing but we need to take into consideration that it's not clipping and all of that so yeah, yeah a lot of uh thing to think about but it's pretty neat to have yeah. them uh, real size yeah. like this i love our props department yeah, like they're so, <laughs> cool. they're so cool the thing is i find it's interesting you're talking about how you know she's heavy the weapons are heavy mm -hmm. because it's our first heavy hero and quite a while yeah. i know a lot of players yes, were true. excited to go like oh we're doing hybrids <laughs> quite often uh but yeah. we're super happy to be able to have a, yeah. new, a new heavy hero and and all all cool. what you just mentioned about the defensiveness of this character is all taken into consideration to create those animations so all the heaviness the, the way she behaves herself with this armor 
uh yeah it was quite the challenge so right. and she's also uh sh like the chill is pretty permanent because she's defensive yes but in the gameplay element she's gonna use it a lot in something that <laughs> we might call the multi-block <laughs> we'll or something see, yeah. but i'm yeah. gonna let we'll to see what Alex, yeah. alex show it but um yeah because yeah. yeah. yes. one of the things that's also super important to us when we're building a new a new hero even though like we have vikings with axes right mm -hmm. we have vikings with swords uh, we have vikings with shields we have vikings with like all sorts yes. of weapons but then if you're looking at this and you think, oh, uh, yeah, it's kind of like Warlord-ish, it's really, really not, It's right? very challenging to create yeah. a new silhouette yeah. with the sometime a weapon that we already have. So, mm. uh, but her shield is pretty unique. Like yeah, the so kite, the shield the is kite. super unique, so that's yeah, great. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the weapon is pretty unique as well. Yeah, it's, it's shorter than other hero, but longer. So it's a pretty good, uh, but her silhouette is pretty unique. When yeah. you play her, you feel completely different. Still Viking. Yeah. But different. So. Also yeah, with the I pointy helmets yes, too. Yeah, really yeah. I, I love <laughs> how like when we were doing the mocap and stuff, we were talking about how the aspects that Steph mentioned earlier, right? She's still a Viking. She's still violent. Absolutely. There's still a lot of strengths behind her attacks, like with the the axe that embeds that sort of stuff. So it's super cool. But at the same time, there's still a more controlled element to how she is. She's not as wild as the other Vikings. That you know, kind of proof of her training and how that sort of thing works. So it's. I, I'm I'm super excited. I'm really happy that we're able to kind of build this type of Viking that feels Viking, yes. but is different from yes. other Vikings. So really and really all cool. those elements were taken into consideration. Yeah. To yeah. Uh, yeah, you really do feel the like nice. yeah. initiate combat and control, <laughs> and then you get into the chain and it goes <laughs> <wild>. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe that's a good chance. Uh, Alex, like uh, you know, are we show some hands-on time. time now? Are you gonna? <laughs> what, yeah, what can you yeah, tell sure. us about yeah, the Varangi uh, guard? Let's jump into the game. Uh, to look at the character, you can see pretty unique silhouette. Uh, also, massive shout out to the animation team just for the twitching stance. Yeah, it looks oh amazing, right? You, you we take a lot of time so for the twitching stance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could do that for an hour. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so here we have a heavy hero. So those heroes tend to be uh, a bit less uh, extravagant in terms of the amount of moves. So uh, we have a two-hit chain, right? Uh, so light heavy, 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 heavy light, heavy, light heavy, uh, yeah, 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 etc. Uh, so first, let's go uh, with the lights. Uh, we really wanted to do a, a superior block uh, focus hero, so all of our lights <laughs> have <laughs> uh, the <laughs> super. You can see uh, the ones in chains as well. Uh, <laughs> you'll see later whenever she has other lights, it will also have a super block. That's just a thing that's gonna yeah. be uh, recurrent. The lights are also enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> great for offense, as for a two hit hero, it's pretty exactly. useful. In our case, you want to get to your, your finishers. So, <laughs> make a lot of sense. Uh, and also, like, that weapon is quite heavy. <laughs> it it kind of really fits with the character as a whole. Uh, and then for the heavies, uh, the heavy finishers are invisible. Uh, so you can see like just wild swings, uh, and if you notice, the axe gets embedded into the opponent in what we call the Aesir state. Uh, so what does that mean? When you embed the axe in the opponent, uh, you can do a headbutt, you just reset your chain, uh, but they can dodge that headbutt, in which case you can guard break them. Uh, if they do dodge attack, they will beat your guard break. So in this case, you can also just bait them to do it. Carry or dodge or whatever. It's important to note that headbutt, uh, for all you frame checkers out there, <laughs> is 400 <laughs> milliseconds. It yeah. is fully unreactable. We've done tests with uh, people that have borderline <laughs> superhuman reactions, <laughs> and they were not able to react to them at all. So that's great. Nice. Very, very potent mix-up. Exactly. Uh, of course... Uh, for the chains, you can also do the zone attack. To the, uh, just to sure. Yeah, so zone into light as well. Yeah. So like all like zone acts as a opener basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I guess we should jump into the specials. Uh, yeah. First, let's look at that sprint attack because it's a, a top attack. So it's it's kind of unique. quite unique. The dive in. Uh, you really feel the weight of the weapon as she, yeah. she crashes down. Uh, and yeah. Exactly. Right. Like, like, like we usually tend tend to do. So it's great. Yeah. Uh, you have dodge attacks as well. Yeah. So side dodge light, front dodge light. As you can see, because they're light attacks, they have this spear block property. So like, if you attack me in, in top heavy, for example, I can just. Yeah. There you go. Wow, that's pretty good. 
And uh, then for the openers, of course you have your enhanced light that helps, but uh, with that shield, people uh, are pretty used to just having a bash opener. Uh, same as uh, other heroes in terms of timing, so this helps you to get into that thing, get a, a extra yeah. way to open. And then that Order. opener goes to goes to that that bash. Yep. The shield bash goes to your openers, right? Yep. So it doesn't yeah, exactly. go to your second hit in your chain. So yep. it does open up for chains where you get your, you get a chance to get a little bit deeper. Exactly. You can just reset your chain. Various ways. Uh, important to note because uh, we didn't mention it during the the chain. She doesn't have a bash and chain. Uh, our heavy finishers are already unblockable, so you're kind of going to do your, your, your mm -hmm. mix-ups uh, with those instead. And so that was a conscious choice that we made yes. as well, uh, because her defense is quite potent, <laughs> right? Having uh, chain lights that, oh, actually, you finish your lights, that have superior block, mm -hmm. they have, like, a long delay window, there's a lot of stuff we can do with that, so it we wanted to really focus on her defense there. And there's another little move that uh, we want to talk about right now, right? Yes. So... With shields come great res responsibility <laughs> in a down stance. <laughs> uh, but this one is quite different. Uh, so first, it's kind of like a Ramusha, where it's a, just a temporary base one. Uh, you can cancel your attack recoveries into it as well. Uh, but of course, I, I can get guard broken, uh, and uh, I can get hit in the recovery. Uh, so it's just you're, you're, you're going to get uh, those... Uh, those moments where you can bait the dodge attack, for yeah. example, go, go into your down stance. Uh, but you got to be careful because you got to uh, time it. And then uh, if we look at the follow-ups, uh, so let's see. You have the heavy, which is unblockable. Uh, there's something special here. We can do in any stance. As I think this is the first time we do that. Uh, with yeah, it's the first time that we end up having uh, like those type of follow-ups be... Uh, you, can, you can pick your stance. It's very, very much uh, the core of For Honor to be able to attack in a specific stance, yeah. choose where you're going. And this also adds like another layer of, of depth to this here a little bit where it's like, well, I can pick my stance. I can go in a situa situational manner where I have somebody on my left, somebody on my right. What am I going to do with it? And okay. so like the other follow-ups are also interesting as well, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so you get your top heavy for max damage, the side one if you want to hit someone on your side. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the light attack. As of course, they have a uh, superior block as well. Yeah. And can chain. Uh, you have the zone attack, so that's if you have like multiple people around you, for example. And just uh, get away from the option. And then uh, you got the bash. Uh, that bash can wall splat as well. So, of course, you can use it to ledge someone, but uh, it can be used as well just to uh, top heavy for exactly. a little bit yeah. more damage. Uh, now, some of you may have noticed <laughs> uh, whenever I do block. GC. The animation on the other side is quite different than usual. Uh, that's a place where we decided, let's try something new, uh, where whenever you block someone with this, you will bind them. Uh, right? Yeah. So that causes some difference. Uh, one, it gives you more time to decide what you want to be doing after, yeah, because you, you have so many yeah, options. Yeah, you can delay your the, the follow-up like, by quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is kind of cool, right? Because it gives you like a lot of control over when you're going to do stuff. It gives you a little bit more time to think, a little bit more time to look around what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. It also means that if you block a trajectory, uh, like let's say someone's attacking GC, but I, I'm in the way of the trajectory and I downstance, I'm just going to interrupt them. The, the the attack will never reach GC. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, you know what? You have other heroes that can kind of like, you know, babysit gang, what we call it. Like you, <laughs> you stay on the sidelines, you hold your, your full block and you just wait there. And then you kind of like hope to cast trajectories. And sometimes you do. They don't necessarily bounce. You get your follow-up, but it doesn't feel as good. So in this case, this is a big part of the support hero, right? So we want to be able to give her a way to very, very effectively counter those big, massive trajectories that we have in group fights. <laughs> There's a mid giant in the opposing team. Ah, eh, no big deal. I'm going to get there. I'm going to tap down, block their big, big trajectories, be able to counter them, save my allies, save a lot of people. So that's really great. Uh, but... That is also a big part of why it's timed, right? So we wanted mm -hmm. to have like that skill-based aspect here, a little bit like we have with BP, where like you have to time things a little mm -hmm. bit better. You can't just go and hold down. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't last forever. So it's it really rewards skillful play, timing, understanding, knowing what, how fast attacks are, slow they are, how to be, how you're able to like manipulate the, the 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 situation around you to really be able to vastly punish your opponents really really well. So exactly. That's super cool. And then. 
like as we'll see the entire feed set like most of the feed set revolves around being able to like block mm -hmm. and support your allies there as well that's a big 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 part of this hero exactly uh there's another thing that we did um so you know when you parry someone at one hp mm -hmm. and then their friend attack you and then you parry their friend and then you're like oh, i can't kill you now you're you recovered <laughs> well Let's fix that <laughs> with this dance. Yeah. So, uh, because we're pushing a bind on the opponent, the more people that you block, everyone will be uh, binded by the, the knock of the shield. So then it kind of allows you to choose your target. Uh, so that's something that other heroes don't have. Uh, normally, if I block someone externally with a down stance, my follow-up is going to be on them. With Varangian, you can choose your target. Uh, <laughs> and no matter who you block, you're always going to be able to hit whoever you blocked. Yeah. And uh, you can also, if someone tries to peel you, you can just attack the external as well, as we see in the video. Yeah. Uh, and then you can see, because you can choose your target, we put a lot of effort into a new tech where she will detect where the hit is coming from. And as you see in the video right now, she will just play an animation accordingly while still looking at her target. Well, there's a lot of animation That's in this system. Because <laughs> yeah. right? yeah. yeah. we had to really plan ahead on like every direction from the player that you're locked on and you want, you're fighting, but if it's coming there, but if somebody's coming on the other way, so from there going on the other side, the shield's pretty big, don't forget that. Yeah. So, <laughs> we so how it do around, we do yeah. it, how do we turn, all of that? It seems, looks simple, but it's pretty complex, yeah. and it, it really gives the defensive like feeling of this character yeah. that yeah, yeah. she can protect you if you fight w with her on, y on your team. It's it, yeah, it gives it you that good. cool, like, you know, cool girls don't look at explosions <laughs> kind of feel, yeah. you know? <laughs> I, it, exactly. It's super awesome. But I find, like, even what Alex was talking about, like, the, the tactical aspect here of I can block multiple people. And what's super cool is that if you manage to block four people, right, you have the time to choose who you're going to pick and who you're going to do your follow-up against. <laughs> and that's kind of part of the tech that we've built for <laughs> this hero where... Yep. If I block a single person, I have my follow-up against that single person. It's good. If I block two, I have time to choose which one of the two. If I block <laughs> four, you have time for all four. Yeah. And as soon as you throw an attack, everybody that you did bind with your block kind of gets out of it. So there's no real situations where you're going to get punished by somebody that you blocked by because you did something else. And it's all it's really all about like making those choices, making sure that you have that control in your hands and have... like perfecting the skill the situational awareness knowing what's going on around you it's it's amazing for this and again like the animation team did a wonderful yes. job alex did a wonderful job there as well yeah making yeah. sure that we have we keep that feeling of i'm blocking in direction we don't have like you know spinning around like we have yeah. with other rules when they blocked it looks really really good yeah. there and like it's it important to mention that the GPP team as well yeah. like worked a lot at, on at, this. At the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it was, it was really a like a work <laughs> to make it work. Yeah, this, this, was, not a, yeah, this was not a simple topic no. to, to tackle yeah, for the team. No, no, no. But, uh, but uh, yeah. you guys pulled it off amazing, so it's yeah. Yeah. super great. Looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. All right, uh, uh, so yeah, we want to talk about feats a little bit? Yeah, I think we're at the feats now. Yeah, we have a little video, right? Yeah, let's go. We're going to run the video. So the first feat is called Take Shelter. So this is part of her support kit. Whenever you land a superior block, uh, you can see the little sphere going to the Valkyrie and it heals her, but it doesn't heal Varangian, yeah. uh, the Varangian guard. So that means that uh, yeah, you're, you're basically just going to be standing there in team fights, heal healing all of your allies. Yeah. Uh, you're keeping them healthy. Of course, uh, it's quite a potent heal, so uh, you're not healing yourself. That's kind of the... Yeah, and there's no cooldown on it, and it yep. triggers off of every super block, so your full block, and as well your crushing counters when you're using yep. your lights. Exactly. So it triggers off of all that, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, uh, for the feat two, two yeah. because your feat one is not keeping you alive, uh, we have Mystia Gar uh, Ward, which is um, whenever you spear block an attack, uh, you will gain a big defense buff for a short duration. Uh, that's kind of like the, the Lawbringer. Uh, feed three. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like righteous affliction, right? But, yeah, yeah. but it's on severe block instead of being on fire. Exactly. Uh, just to make sure that whenever you're in those b big team fights, that you don't go down uh, too fast. Uh, and now, to go back into the support, uh, here's the ACR Aura. So that one is every single time you land an unblockable heavy, you will pulse a AoE that will give a little attack buff to you and your friends. Uh, so that that really allows you to get that air seer bind with the the heavy, and then 
you and your friend can kind of take advantage of, uh, of it with the, with the damage buff. So all of this kind of plays into the support and the defensive and tactical aspects. Exactly. We talked about that. It's really great though. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then we got feed four. Yeah, and then uh, feed four. Reclaim the land. So going back uh, to fight the uncle. <laughs> um, so as you see, it seems like it's a projectile from the sky. So that's kind of like a spear storm. It acts kind of like a, a catapult, so you cannot do it indoor. Uh, so there's going to be a bunch of spears that, that, that fall into your enemy for damage. And then it's going to leave a Doom Banner, which is, uh, if people are familiar, it's uh, the Berserker Feet 2. So it, it plants a banner, and then every enemy inside of it is going to have lesser defense. And yeah, debuffs defense. So it's yeah. really great for like point control, that sort of stuff. You get in, you throw that, there's a bunch of people in there. Even if they dodge out, well, then you can go into that banner and then try to beat me. You know, So yeah. it, it feels, again, it, it feeds into all those aspects. It's, yeah, it, exactly. it's, it's really, really interesting feature. Yeah. Like, we're going there, there's a banner. Attack yeah. everyone, <laughs> get the buff, <laughs> heal everyone, yeah. embed your axe in people. There you go. <laughs> Works really good. Easy. Yeah. Super right. easy. Right? Cool. Uh, great. Yeah, so definitely a lot of really cool, like, defensive options, tactical, like you were talking about here. Just such a, like, a huge support character, which is really, just really fun. Like, uh, I like that a lot personally, so I can't wait to play her uh, next week as well. <laughs> uh, do you have some other things you want to show off, though, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, have we have a video for emotes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And emotes. Well, yeah. yeah. Max so let's jump into the emotes. Yes. So we got the combat emotes here. There you go. Uh, so we have all the emotes for her, uh, representing herself. Uh, like she rely pe uh, r rally people around her, like the Doom Banner, exactly. Like it's a bit that, like the banner that comes in. She's you want to be with her when you fight. Um, yeah, some also like <laughs> fun emotes. Uh, cool yeah. Some other fun ones. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. She's so yeah. So you want to recreate the trailer? You get all the emotes to recreate the trailer. That's super <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. No, exactly. It really showed the personality of the the character itself, and of course, player customization. It's really fun to be yeah. the one that you know call out the. You're alive, so it's a huge aspect of For Honor. Yeah, it's it amazing. is. It is. Yeah, sometimes uh. things don't 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 work oh. as uh, yeah, yeah. intended. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have executions that'll be coming up yes. shortly. Well, as well. But she's got to finish yeah. stretching. Yeah, this, this is this is it. I really like this. Yeah. Uh, this <laughs> <laughs> it's it like I mean, you those, those women like are heavy, <laughs> so you know sometimes you just have to, you know. <laughs> it also reminds you, like when you game, you get a stretch sometimes. Take a little bit of water. <laughs> well. Okay, cool. So we've got those <laughs> and we have executions. Yes, well. yes. The executions. Yeah. That's they, cool. they're, they're, they're so here. good. They're yes. so good. So you really feel the heaviness of the spider yeah. in those executions. And I love like how we kind of handled the shield with like yes. you know, kind of punching with the shield as she well. She really use it more like yeah. as a defensive yeah. tool, yes. Mm -hmm. But also as uh, it's you know, pointy, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has a dual like you, you can use it as to protect, but also to attack, yeah. which yep. he does. <laughs> and this is where also like the the the, the violent Viking part of yes. it comes into play, right? It's exactly like what Stefan was saying in the beginning. Exactly. exactly. Right? So yeah. she's more controlled in general in her fighting and stuff. But when you look at these executions, you see her Viking <laughs> side really come out. Yes. And it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna, you know. She's violent, but not like control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very controlled violence. You don't want to yeah. have this axe embedded in your face. <laughs> exactly. That's for sure. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> no, no, it looks very painful. Uh, well, yeah, those look amazing. Really cool. Uh, great work on the animation team. Again, putting all that together. Just super bloody and violent and, and, and horrifying to think about. So great <laughs> stuff, uh, as always. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Alex, so, uh, I mean, we, we've talked a lot. We've showed off a lot here. But uh, if you were to say just maybe for new players here coming in, like wanting to, to you know, start playing the Varangian Guard, uh, who, you know, what would be like maybe the closest, uh, you know, character facsimile in the game right now? Just so they can get um, used to it. It feels kind of a mix in between, I would say, like Warlord, surprisingly. Yeah, surprising, <laughs> and, yeah. um, and Aramusha, in the sense that the, the down stance is temporary like Aramusha, and you can do it uh, after your recoveries. So so you kind of get like kind of all of the heaviness of the of the Warlord. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those uh, those recovery cancel of Aramusha, yeah. yeah. There's a bit of Black Prior in there as well. Like oh you yeah, for to sure. like, you know, mm -hmm. do stuff on from external trajectories. That's really good there as well. Yeah. Cool. Like if, if a new player picks it up, it's uh, like just get into your chain, try to to learn how to to use those recovery cancels in the in group fights, and it, it should be good. Nice. It's great because yeah, it's the hero's not like it's simple to play, like it's easy to pick up, 
but it's really hard to master yeah. every little detail with it. That's really, really good. Exactly. Your positioning, what attack to yeah. use, when, yeah. when to defend. Super great. Yeah. Yeah. So with all of that too, like how do you, JC, how do you feel like this is going to impact like the overall meta, you know, the big, yeah, the competitive, competitive, right? so, all that. Uh, so one of the big things that we were keeping in mind while designing this hero is as the game has been moving more towards big group fights, big wide trajectories, the meta has been super, super impacted by this. Why we've seen the rise of Medjai, rise of like heroes like Jan Jung and stuff that have those big hits, those big hit boxes around them. So this hero is was built to be a counter to this, right? So mm. it's if there is a range and guard on the opposing team, you have to be careful where you're going to be throwing your attacks, how you're going to be doing your stuff. Yes, it's not a super hard counter, but it still works really quite well there. So we're really expecting to be able to see her more into those compositions where you need to defeat uh, opposing teams that are really using those group fight tools that we've been that we've been building all over the, all over this like this past year, past year, year and yeah. a half. So it's really built around this. We had this in mind while we were building this hero as well as when we were like buffing up group fights. So this is how I really, really feel like it's gonna go, both in regular gameplay and in competitive, right? Because in regular, it's gonna happen once in a while. You're gonna be able yeah. to block with those trajectories, but at competitive level, I've, I've seen the players that we're gonna be seeing playing later, mm -hmm. use her very, very, very effectively, use all those superior blocks, use that full block, all of these things really well. So I can really see her getting picked in a lot of situations and okay. be very, very effective. It's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think you've, you've described the meta, I know, during the development as, like, this is a character where, like, she wants to be supporting her group, her team. So you, as an opponent, you want to kill her. But it's really hard to kill her because she's constantly supporting her team. So, like, <laughs> exactly. yeah. Right. So, like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big part of it where you want to, like, make sure that she's there. She's a threat. And it's one of the first few times where you're like, well, I have to kill this hero first. Yeah. And we built with yeah. that in mind, right? With all those yeah. defensive tools that make it make her harder to kill. Yeah. So it's all those little aspects that kind of blend together that make for something super interesting. And the other thing that we were hoping to have is if you're playing this game and you have a friend that's starting or whatever, you can play with them and stick close to them and actually mm -hmm. actively help them in group mm -hmm. fights and protect them and defend them. And it fits really, really well with the hero's thematic, but also with what we're kind of gameplay elements and where we're trying to push the game. Awesome. Super cool. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for sharing all of that, and, and well, Vanessa, too, for being on the couch.